Welcome back to Let's Play Shadowrun Hong Kong. I believe we're in the corner of there we are. Um, we are in the corner, although for some reason something's gone wrong with my mouse cursor. I don't know, it's all, it's all good. It's working now. Uh, we are in the hub a hub area of Heoi? Heoi? Yeah, one of those Heoi. places. We're yeah, standing we, outside this ship. The game doesn't have voice acting. I'm Nathan, by the way. I'm Thomas. Uh, Always the game been. doesn't have voice acting, and we are both Anglos, so our pronunciation, uh, various degrees and you know, flavors <laughs> of Anglo, but we do not speak Mandarin or Cantonese, oh. Cantonese being the relevant uh, language here, but we don't speak Chinese. Um, I was planning to so take Mandarin language lessons at one point. I actually was looking into specific classes, and then there was this uh, political turn in my country, yeah. uh, Australia, where it... Uh, not, I, I'm not saying I was sort of convinced by local politics to, to not learn Mandarin, more like it became clear it wasn't going to be useful because uh, a lot of people in Australia had just decided, you know what, we don't care about China, we've got, got to be nice to China, we don't want to talk to Chinese people, don't want to do business with them, we'd rather be, be angry about China. It is getting similarly ridiculous here in the United States, but this uh, is not a politics podcast. Uh, this is or fictional not, China. In fact, this is yeah. fictional Hong Kong, which, you know, in the Shadowrun universe, I have no idea whether this is part of any country. Uh, I assume we will learn at some point. There will be emails <laughs> to read. Oh, I got the vague impression Hong Kong was independent, but I, mm -hmm. I don't know for sure yet. Or well, not... I will, I will not even raise the question, what is the Shadowrun status of Hong Kong? We've got to talk... Oh, of Taiwan, sorry. Uh, we've got Gobbit to talk to here. Gobbit says we have a place to sleep, which is nice. Yes, this is the bolt hole, which we've seen... Um, we saw ourselves walking into at the beginning of this episode, but mm -hmm. it is a boat, um, like a tugboat, or a, 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 like, not a seafaring vessel, but like something that, you know, scoots around harbors, it appears. Yeah, well, um, it would have been uh, seafaring at one point, but certainly not yes. anymore. Um, Cobbett makes it clear that we have individual toilets, which is nice. I think that it sounds like they're referencing some kind of past problem there. I assume so. It probably had to do with Gutshot, because he was an asshole. <laughs> yeah, could be. Oh, hey, it's some more reminiscing. Duncan's taking his sunglasses off again, but uh, Danny Flesh never removes his sunglasses. No, uh... Mainly because, I mean, he could. I mean, there are alternate, like, e in Shadowrun um, Hong Kong, each of these, like, has a base, like, there's a base elf dude, so there's, like, mm -hmm. a version of this elf elf guy that just, instead of glasses, has, like, you know, spooky lights around his temple. I would have to do um, some save file editing to actuate yes. this, but, oh, yeah, I prefer the idea that he just, just straight up can't be bothered taking them off. Uh... He wears sunglasses at night and indoors. Like, it's very vampire of him. I actually I believe I... there are... I've got to kind of get. Vampires. Oh, really? What? As well? <laughs> I guess it's yeah, somewhere in the else. world. Yeah. I'm not sure they'll be in this game, but mm -hmm. um, you know, every every all the big you know staples. Yeah, uh, is it from the genres of fantasy or science fiction? If so, then it's in Shadowrun. So, what are we talking about here? Well, I'm trying to decide how to characterize our past interactions with Junkin here. Yes. You know, it was a uh, did Daniel. Um, you know, complain about the places they used to live when they were street kids. Did he? Did Duncan hate dogs? Did you know? Do they both have an unexpected respect for their neighbors? He's a cop. Cop. Oh, and dogs yeah, you get along. That's a good point. Yeah, you hated that dog. I claim. Still, it was sad what happened to him. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fun memories, clearly. All right. So uh, Duncan points out it would be a good idea to get some sleep. But, uh, Gobbit asks if we need anything. Hmm. I am tempted I to clean. We will be able to choose these options and enumerate. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's question her a bit. But, uh, yeah. Let's start with the most important things. Like my stuff. What is this place anyway? Why is it a I like boat? That, I like that little answer. It's a lot bigger than it looks because it is, of course, an infinite storage general stash. Ah, I was just thinking it opened into the compartment behind the wall or something. I know it's an RPG inventory. Prime piece of real estate. Oh, he's got jokes. The cops got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Duncan's certainly got his good points. BTL junkies. 
whipped out on some multiplayer cyber game, and she's not sure they ever chipped out. Ah, oh, no, the job. Because if you die in the game, you die in real life. You get the ultimate chip out. Ugh, this is actually pretty nasty stuff. Will remind me not to play that cyber game. Isadora Bell is not quite so sure about it. So, reminds me of the Alpha Strikes. It, kind of unclear here, did they just let them die? That's <laughs> what we're about to find out. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Nightjar ran them out, not yep, sure so what yep. happened to them. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Probably ran them out into the water immediately outside. Okay. And yeah, of course, Kindly Cheng has the final word on who owns what around here, except the engine room. Hmm. Foreshadowing? What, she lives here? She sublet it. Oh my no, god. She, she sublet it. <laughs> we're, we're not getting away from Kindly Cheng, are we? Okay. <laughs> Duncan is also funny. Oh, hang on. Okay, okay. She doesn't live here herself, personally. They've got a downstairs neighbor. So this one is my next question redundant, but I will ask, you know, Gobbit, mm -hmm. is it just you and Isirobel here? I, even though I know it's not. Huh? Oh, I guess Maybe they don't she on the main floor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're the only ones who are right here in this room right now. Yeah, Nightjar and Gotjot still dead. Sorry about that. Wasn't my fault. Yeah, metal grinding on my... So the guy below is a creepy Russian guy. He mostly keeps to himself. He makes weird squealing metal noises. Yeah. I know what that is, and that's a very funny introduction to the character. Look okay. I'll yeah. look forward to that. But for now, it seems like it's time to go to bed. In the morning, I'm sure we can poke around. All right. Level transition, I assume. Or, or maybe not. Okay. Everyone just kind of walks off. Do we have to click on something? Ah, I see. An objective marker, possibly representing a bedroom. Yeah, it doesn't look like the computer or anything is available right yeah. now. There, there is, however, the stash. All right, there's uh, there's nothing in it. Right, but I will put things there later. Confirm. Despite having claimed I was just going to go to bed and rather than poking around, I will. Yeah, at least click around a little bit, like, yeah, there's a level here, you can't not click on things, right? But I won't bother Duncan, like, I can, I can guess what he would say, and what he would probably say is, I'm very tired and upset. Okay, okay, let's, let's advance the plot here, any objections? Nope. Right, I'll reach out and touch this cot. Hmm. Interesting they've got these spare rooms. Obviously this was not Nightjar or Gutshot's place. Lice and bed bugs are absent. The salt air is fresher than the rancid stink of Redmond. I wonder... Is that's, that like... Ca that's ca that hair has got to be pretty bad if the harbour of Hong Kong has, um, mm. has a better sea breeze. The rotting corpse of Microsoft really must stink up the place. Sleep washes over you like a warm bath, and everything goes black. This is making me tired in real life. Ooh, it's a cutscene. It's a horned and vaguely female figure. Streets, faces, a door. Was that the walled city again? I believe so. That the, it, the crash zoom at the end was on the door to the tea shop where Raymond was killed. Mm. Now, I didn't get any audio from that. Was there anybody speaking? No, there was a just squealing noises and <laughs> kind of thing, and uh, metal noises. Normal, normal stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know, you know, in a world where the key is this bad all around you, um, with such terrible feng shui. Come on, Daniel, wake up. The other's already left. Oh, nice. 
but uh, eh, I don't like the idea of being shaken awake. I mean, the whole you know Foster Brothers thing. Yeah, I, I guess in in it's probably the. All right, I'll just be an asshole about it rather than a bit, a bit like a douchebag rather than an asshole about it. It's fine. Yeah, I'm comfortable with with this douchebag personality. I think better than actually being mean. Yeah, I think like sort of the implication is that you were like just woken out of the nightmare, which was a natural sleep. Yeah, it seems but to be. I will actually Duncan tell him. Doesn't about. seem. Yeah, Duncan doesn't seem like he was perceptive enough to pick that mm. up on his own. I will tell him about it, because it's interesting that, uh, that Daniel is having this nightmare and Duncan is not. So it's not like the connection to Raymond that's causing it. Oh, hello. Oh, well, or is there it? it is. Never remember my dreams all that well. Hmm. Hmm. Well, the answer to you doing okay is has got to be no, right? Like, how could you be at this point? Nothing's gone right since you've stepped foot in this country, he says, which again raises the question of what country it is. Hmm. Could Raymond Black be alive? We discourse I mean, upon the topic. I, Duncan has more genre savvy than we do. He uh, does, yeah. like, very obvious. It's not clear yeah. whether he was any good at being a cop, and no. whether the being a cop skill set is even applicable to this problem, but he may have been. But it does seem from this isometric point of view that Raymond Black is definitely still alive. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, the news wouldn't be trying so hard to convince us he was dead. Yeah, and yeah. the thing about the newscast being untrustworthy is, is definitely accurate. Yep, I'm certainly not going to claim I know Raymond to definitely be dead. Huh. He wants Daniel to be the brains of the outfit. That's convenient, since I am, or we are, collectively the protagonist. <laughs> I do like this characterization that yeah, not only is his partner and his dad gone, he's gone, because he's now sinless, so his identity has also been taken. I'm sure that hits differently for the guy who just got out of jail, and it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Previous identity was, was also already taken. Yeah, it wasn't, like, really helping him out that much in the eight years that Daniel <laughs> yeah. Black was uh, spending in... Do you think he got the name in Black prison? Day. Uh, I don't want to know how. <laughs> uh, like, there don't seem to be many out. opportunities to, like, I don't know, Become demonstrate foot Danny speed or Flash, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, yeah, I it's got to be uh, an older persona, I think. Think. What else, asks Duncan, is going to be taken away from me? Even now, in the far future, pe uh, people are still asking their siblings, do you still have that piercing you got in Tacoma? <laughs> Which is, I think, in, in Washington? It's an American town. Yes, it's genre. a slightly less cool um, city in uh, Tacoma. Yeah, I believe it's Washington. Um, you know, not one of the big ones. It's not Portland, mm -hmm. it's not Seattle. But, you know, it's there. I want to say a, a bunch of the tech companies have, have taken up residence there, or at least have satellite offices there. Okay, so it's a bit like a San Jose to Seattle, San Francisco or something. I don't remember the exact geography, but I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I mm -hmm. want to say it's farther inland. Yeah, uh, I've uh, sitting on the coast. The closest I've ever been to Seattle is a one weekend in Los Angeles, so I don't know much about the geography. I remember yeah, it's, an ocean. It's, it's like, oh no, it, it's it's on the water, but it's south. Mm -hmm. So like, it's closer to Olympia in, in the mountains. Um, ah, yes, mysterious and exotic sorry. place names. Like, like it's, Hong it's, Kong. Yeah, yeah, most of the shots you'll see of Tacoma have Mount Rainier in the background. Actually, to me, Hong Kong is probably a lot closer and less exotic um, than even the west coast yeah. of the U.S. And I know a bunch more people from Hong Kong than from America. Uh, that's just geography so um, as we hypothesized yeah, last a video or two ago kindly Cheng wants us to take over for the dead shadow runners right so let's uh, yeah. let's point this out to Duncan but, uh, setting us up for what he wants to be our fixer yes 
Uh, that said, I'm not sure I'm entirely happy about this, so I'm, I'm not going to say I necessarily agree to it, but that is what she wants. Danny Flash she does look like a guy who has a fixer. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he would take to being a Shadowrunner better than Duncan would, for sure. But it's just that Cheng is so so clearly dangerous, and only conditionally. She can be friendly and helpful if she happens to like you, but you know, it's up to her, not you. Uh, it worries me. It worries Duncan, too. She seems rational, at least. Like, she she's doing a bit, like this whole the whole kindly auntie bit. She like is sucks. It's yeah, annoying. It, it is. But it is an act, yes, but it's not a nice act. No, but underneath it, there seems to be someone who is actually able to, you know, and I believe, and that was like kind of the point of the whole, you know, deliver a message. No, literally delivery mm -hmm. message. That's right. She's not. She's. She doesn't actually pointlessly kill people. Not pointlessly. Only if there's something to be gained from it. So, so we have to pick a quote here, which we're attributing to Ray Raymond. Uh, hmm. I don't even know what that third one means. I'm not sure what. It, does do do walls really help with? I guess walls do help some with wind. Like, you, do you, you do you build a wall to keep the wind out? That's what a house is, I suppose. Some people be. Yeah. I think you need both of those. That's a crappy quote. I'm just gonna go with the other one. Yeah. Raymond like to talk in bumper stickers. Okay. All right, let's get out of here. Get after Gobbit and his zero bell. That triad lady, as he describes Ching. Ah, I mean, it's an accurate description. And we regain control. All right, let's poke around the place. This is Danny's room. For a moment, I thought this was Duncan's, and I was like, oh, he's got a stash too, but no, he doesn't. So, we should go upstairs and poke around and look at the other people's rooms, right? Yes. I don't actually want to piss off Isabel and Cobbett, who are being surprisingly nice, all things considered. But I also don't want to not poke around their rooms and their secrets and so on. Well, this would be Isabel's room, I'm guessing. <laughs> it looks technological. Oh, hello. There's something up in the top left there. Map reuse, possibly? Or a different part of the upper floor of the ship? Assuming that's what it is. Yeah, this seems like more computers than any one woman needs. Or more screens. Yeah. Yeah, there may only be one actual computer, I suppose. Presumably this is like the ship's mainframe or whatever, repurposed into well, used a hacker to be the paradise. Bridge, right? Yeah. Like, that's the, that thing in the center used mm -hmm. to be the big map. Does she uh, sleep where the captain here? stands around. <laughs> She's put up blackout curtains over where the windows used to be. It's a hell of a gamer chair. Yeah. I am actually impressed. Some kind of emergency life... Uh, what are these things called? Life preserver? Yes. Yeah. Like the candies. Do you have those in America? The... Um, Life preserver, oh, lifesaver candies. Lifesavers, yes. yeah. We have, we have both. We have both the thing and its reference. The candy and its reference. Excellent. Yeah, we don't call them lifesavers here, but we've got them. BHC, whatever that stands for. There's a rat. This is probably Gobbit's room. <laughs> She's like, yeah. is this like her rat? Is this a shrine? Does she worship the rat? I mean, the shaman thing does seem pretty literal, yeah. uh, and she does seem like a hammock person, doesn't mm -hmm. she? Yeah, I, I get the, the hammock vibe. All right, well. Uh, Isabel literally her. has a sleeping pad right next to her mainframe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All that matters to her, presumably, is this bit here in the bottom center. The big chair with the big screen. I wonder if we can get down to the engine room and uh, speak with um, whoever was making all guy. that noise. Yeah, let's try it. Let's see if there's a way to move around this place. And there's a door out to the waterfront. But I don't see Maybe any it. other doors to different parts of the bolt hole at the moment. Might be that he we get to his place from the outside. Yeah, let's go find out. So we've got Ching to speak to and we'll find out whatever things there are out in Hioi. 
including people selling various Shadowrunning gear, I would hope. We came across some of that earlier. There was the monk guy who wouldn't talk to us yet. He might know things about physical adepthood, which would be good. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other ways into the bolt hole, do you? No. Maybe try going back upstairs and seeing if that other part of the map that can be accessed was... Mm, um, Alright, sure. Let's, let's try it out. I wonder if there's a run button. No, you already moved fairly fast, so there probably isn't. I do definitely want to find these things out if I'm going to be getting into this business. Um, it behooves us to, to, to be informed about it, doesn't it? Uh, I can click up there. It just causes huh. Danny to walk around a little bit. Eh? Oh, that is strange. Alright. Hmm. A future prospect. Alright, at to hear you. Wow, you can zoom out quite a long way. Let's go talk to the monk guy, unless there's something it does, else you'd rather It does do. not look like there is actually room for that to be on the map. With um, that, because that, because we were just in that very top boathouse, right? I, we could have been in, on the, the main deck. I'm not sure, actually. We could have been in the cargo hold. I don't know how much of it is seaworthy. So this is Spider Shen, who would not deal with us before Cheng approved of us. Uh, does she approve of us now? Like, I guess so. Nothing for sale nope. here, not for you. Yeah, I'll get Chandley Cheng to vouch for you. Alright, I guess she's still gating us. I guess we're still not officially sinless, or we don't have the record of... Well, wait, what kind of record do you have of not having any records about you? Various people who won't deal with us yet. Maybe I should simply go back to the Mahjong parlor. Yeah, I believe we're fairly on rails here for... Uh, hopefully this conversation is the last bit of this. And some stuff starts opening up. That'd be nice. There's an interesting little market here with balloons and drones and stuff. Alright, let's go inside. It's as it was. Yeah, the graphics are pretty good given their budget, but um, there's a bit more animation would really help the feel of it. Like, there's a few places where, at this table, for example, the people are moving around just a little bit. And that makes that part of the room feel... A Wait, hang on, what the hell is going on here? Uh, I believe that our uh, man Strangler Bao might have come in for his meeting. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Wait, no, no, that guy's wearing actual, like, clothes, yeah, that's not, not flip-flops and yeah. je in jeans. This guy is probably not in Cheng's favor, I'm thinking. Let's, let's check this out. Alright, stale cigar smoke, fresh urine, no mahjong tiles clicking. Everyone is excited for whatever the hell is happening here. What a lovely triad. Oh, we're not going to have a torture scene, are we? What is this, a rock star game? We might have already missed the torture. That's a rather small tarp for what you're aiming to do here. Like, I, look yeah. at he can he can fall over and that rug is ruined. Mm hmm. Uh, unless they're gonna wrap a body in it or something. So. Kindly Ching ignores the scene. Okay. Yeah, I. I oh, that's I, that's Strangler Bow standing to the right. He has not changed. Ah yes, possibly he has turned in someone who she wanted turned in, and he's now in a, uh, in the good books. If he's paying his, his fees. Uh, this guy, though, what about him? Ah, a police officer. Ah, well, Cheng claims he was trying to assassinate me specifically. I wouldn't want that. Is it true, though? Huh. Well, true or not, we can still be a douche about it, right? <laughs> He's glistening at me. He's glistening with raw hatred. Well, Danny Flash does tend to inspire that in people. Yeah. Oh dear. Okay, forgot. Yeah, Cheng is not something you want to piss off. Vow, I don't mind. But, uh, mm. A disposable outsider. Mmm. Mmm.
Oh, hey, the guy straight up admits it. The whole department is in on it. I have less than even my usual um, low amount of uh, sympathy for uh, this guy. Considering the cop our assassin. First encounter. Yeah. yeah, our first encounter with the Hong Kong police force. Yeah, well, the last ones we met tried to kill us. This guy apparently also tried to kill us. That is basically all they do. Sometimes they go in jail and call us terrorists. I go on TV, I should say. Sorry. <laughs> Some kind of Freudian cop slip there. It's someone on the council. Don't you always hate it when someone on the council is gunning for you in an RPG? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's an opportunity as well as a problem. It means you've got acquaintances in high places. Someone on the executive council. <laughs> Cheng is, like, offended at the idea that Danny Flash could be important enough to want killed. Because she has, you know... Wants to remind him of his place. It doesn't really fit her narrative. Actually, it doesn't make any sense, though. Like, I, I kind of get where she's coming from. Who was Raymond Black? Mm. Well, the thing about labeling as terrorists uh, is true. We saw that. Then she slowly digs her fingers into scalp. It beggars belief, the idea that that we would think that corporations can't just order the cops to kill people in UCAS. Yeah. Given Danny's personal background, like, uh, what? <laughs> he does make that point, though, in the second one, that this, the, the kayfabe all seems like a bit much. Yeah, I will ask the media reports. I will ask about that. I don't want, don't want to be impolite anymore, because Kindly has reminded me that's a bad idea right now. The people feel safer when their murders feel like part of civilization. Yeah, I, as a person, I've often felt this way. As a general principle, yes. This is still very specifically a lot of effort. Yes, that's right. It doesn't really justify the White Star claims. Seattle isn't like Hong Kong. There, the megacorps control the government. Here, the corps are the government. I uh, the distinction is a bit too fine. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it does sound like Seattle and Hong Kong are quite like each other in that respect. <laughs> uh, I guess the yeah, UCAS has the uh, veneer of elections, right? Corporate Board of Governments. Okay, so Hong Kong is an independent um, country, I guess is the term, not a nation. Chosen by a bunch of corporations. I assume it's, it's the... probably a zone. It's probably yeah. a, like a special economic zone. zone. Oh. Whatever it is, it's got an executive council chosen by the corporate board of governors, the investors in Hong Kong. An even number mm -hmm. of uh, voters on that board. We're being told about this in the Shadowrun universe as if it's supposed to be surprising and fucked up. I guess a lot of people in Shadowrun haven't really accepted that they are in the Shadowrun setting. For the wage slaves and the civilian sheep, the corporations are a pantheon of gods who wield absolute power, but not for us. Oh, she's in speechifying mode. Yeah, this is where I get the hard sell. The, I mean, this whole scene is the hard... It's, it's like, you know, hey, you could work for me now. Uh, or alternatively, you could just fucking die. I mean, I mean, I might not have to kill you. The cops will do that. Do you think this guy's name is Shitbird, or is she just calling him Shitbird? Well, this is the first time it's gotten proper noun treatment, but I think this is like sort of he's been renamed. He's, yeah, his now name is his now. Is, that's right. He may have had another one at some point. No one knows they're here. Bao might know about this. Mm -hmm. What I don't get is why this guy is unstrangled. Oh, oh, there we go. You know. They don't call him Pistol Bow. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe they should. How to react to this? Like, what's it's the? It's certainly not three. No, 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 no. That would be stupid. Um, just as efficient. 
and were we actually? I don't think we were really wondering with two. I, yeah. I mean, that's. I guess that's something you say, but. Um. Yeah, it is if you want to quip. I don't want to quip. I want to butter up the the terrifying old woman and uh, be a douche to everybody else, maybe, and if I feel like it. So, but maybe not to her. Something different to do with prosperity. Of course, now he's our friend Raymond Black. I don't recall him being her friend before. I believe Cheng was. This is this has been a week since we recorded the last episode, but I believe Cheng was mis was intentionally leaving their relationship unclear, but it sounded vaguely businessy in the very distant mm -hmm. past. I got the impression they didn't actually have any kind of relationship at all, but she wanted to kind of portray it as if they did to profit from the situation. Mm. This plastic faced van, yeah, we're really calling him that. Yeah, here it comes. Work for me. It's, it would be hard to say no. There's not a lot of choice here. Hmm. I think the fourth option is the most economical and so the, the, the quickest to say. Yeah, we can uh, describe what she is already describing, but in one word, we'll be shadow runners. Duncan is also basically not like saying that it's not exactly saying the title, but it's close enough. To <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Work for me. Become Shadowrunners Hong Kong Extended Edition. Okay, so she promises that we won't be assassinated by the police in exchange for working for her, and we get money. I wonder if we could uh, try and find out what happened to Raymond if she's interested in that as well. This honestly seems like a good deal compared to the alternatives. Again, I'm just saying that tarp was way too small to actually catch the blood spatter. That uh, he, that couch, that couch has stuff all over it. Yeah, the pistol was the wrong choice there. He, he fell accurately. It was like cutting down a tree, right? Bao knows what he's doing when it comes to murders, but or executions. But yeah, the, the sofa should not be in the shape it's in. Uh, huh. Yeah, what does Cheng actually... Well, I mean, she wants us to make money for her, but... A brazen disregard of my power. I will ask questions. I'm not going to be rude to her, but I do need to get things straight. How would the arrangement work? Mm -hmm. So basically it sounds like uh, the, the job of being a shadow runner in Hong Kong at least is that you do crimes for money. Yes. Unclear what crimes, just, you know sort of things you do, you do when you have dot 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 talents. The basic arrangement seems to be, coming in from Dragonfall and listening to what Chang is saying now, is you do a mission and you also sort of just steal anything that is, isn't nailed down. We stole a mission. chip and some data, in fact, on the last mission, because they were there. Yeah, sounds good. Certainly as an RPG player, uh, this sounds congenial. Congenial, sorry. You need a partner. Kindly Chang will be your person. partner. <laughs> Uh, oh, Daniel's got. Sorry, Duncan's got an opinion. What is that opinion? I, could, I honestly don't know what he's going to say here. It's kind of the Duncan brand, isn't it? Yeah, he's in. Yep. Okay, so what are our motivations here? Is One it, is technically true, but. Yeah. Lacking something. Yeah, option one is, you know, got nothing better to do. Option two, money. Three, we need to, you know, save ourselves from the situation temporarily. Option four. Now, is... three betrays a lack of awareness of your situation because you're not clearing your name. Your name <laughs> no. <doesn't> exists. <laughs> That's right. The name has yeah. been wiped clear. There is no name. Daniel Lu is dead. There is only Danny Flash. It's two, four, or five, and I think the question between four or five is do we call him raymond or ray in our heads <laughs> yeah duncan says ray but i don't know about that uh, raymond seems like a better a better option maybe i'm just saying that because i saw everything everywhere all at once recently 
Oh, but it also depends, like, I guess we already established that we also think he's alive. And I guess yeah. him being alive yeah. means we have to pull him Ray. Yeah, I don't like the quips usually, but let's run the shadows is, is just, a sl just a douchey enough thing to say. All right. Duncan talking about Cheng as if she wasn't standing right there. Maybe he's genuinely not scared of her. He should be. He's not very smart. So. <laughs> not enormously, no. Just order of business. Danny Flash here has already chosen a street name. This is true. I don't know how she knows that. Maybe she deduced that it's not my real name. Wasn't no, no, no. You remember? Remember, we had that entire scene where she said it, she said she liked the name. Oh yes, it's that's literally right. just yeah, a yeah. piece of code where it says like back. bracket string and it pulls your name <laughs> from street name sounds good or something so whatever yeah. you put in there well it does sound good um, sort of it sounds it sounds like it sounds cool it doesn't sound cool but it sounds like it's cool so duncan needs a straight name does he good luck it's gonna be gun yeah it's duncan. <laughs> if Gobert gets away with that she is going to own him i hope he's aware of this is her abilities, of course, on her side. He's not oh, even. And he's to already resist. giving up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's gun show. <laughs> All right. So the terms of the deal. Well, the jobs she lines up for us will be on the boat computer. Yeah, indeed. Why me? Like, I I don't I don't object. I just want to know. Isabel doesn't do leadership. She's too short. Gobbit. Right, yes, Cheng thinks she's stupid. Now, uh, maybe true, I don't actually know. <laughs> Isabel doesn't have doesn't like leadership, and I'm racist against orcs, which yeah. eliminates Gobbit and Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> the jury's out. No, she doesn't necessarily oppose Duncan at this point, but for Danny she likes. Mm-hmm. Cheng is not stupid. Unfortunately, she is very smart. All right. But, uh, look, I, I am. I, I am insisting on two. Yeah. Yes, we we have to confirm it. He's gun show now. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, and I've given Duncan a lot of shit, but I am not taking kindly Cheng's side. Oh yeah, 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 Duncan yeah, in public. No, absolutely, and also I wanted to call him gun show. Hmm. Option three is actually too douchey. Let's just uh, matter-of-factly take control of this criminal gang. Well, yeah, sub-gang, obviously, Kindly Cheng is in control of the actual gang here. <laughs> oh my god. So he actually oh, used to use You got it when you were eight or something. Yeah, as a street kid. Well, that, makes, that actually makes sense then. It does sound yeah. cool if you're eight. Welcome to the shadows. Thank you. I am very appreciative of Gobbert and Isabel um, dealing with a difficult situation in a way that was very helpful to us when we needed help. So I'm going to be pro them. They've been friendly. I don't know about this this no head for business thing. Got to find out what's going on there. Like the way that Ching works with Gobbert and Isabel is is odd. But, uh... All right. All right. We have a mission computer. Okay, time to... I could ask Ching some more questions, but I kind of don't want to do it while there's this body here. Yeah. I'd be okay with needling bow, but that's, that's not an option presented to us by the game. I think we did get the line of dialogue that says shops have been activated. We did. Um, she said Hayway is now open to you or something like that. Should we go to the shops? Yes. Let's go shopping. This could be fun. Crew advancement is now available. Cool. All right, so we get an icon. I remember that icon from Dragonfall like eight years ago. One or two yeah. possible combat skills for us. Choose wisely. I might not. Well, let's see what's available and whether we have to do it immediately. Exit, clear all, confirm all. Okay, so we can actually advance. I don't quite. For some reason, that one's not. 
Huh. Uh, the UI was confusing me for a moment there, but uh, it looks like we can advance people, but I won't do that at this very second. I'll just click exit for now. I want to study and think about those. But I want to talk to that monk guy. I want to find out what the hell physical adepts are meant to do other than just punch people. I, I have a feeling that's going to be the brunt of it. Like, there are <laughs> right. bells and whistles. <laughs> Maybe but... that's the point, is the punching. Hey, Spider, if that really is your name. The proprietor's expression is indifferent, though hardly placid or serene. Well, he's certainly a guy who likes to give the impression that he knows how to fight. I believe they, that their pronouns might actually be they, them. Mm -hmm. I'll find out in a sec. Malay weapons, charms, jade pendants, and other mystical accoutrements. Exotic reptiles and insects. What do you use those for in a, in a martial arts fight? Alright, so this is Spider Shin, who is a... Not expressed agenda. I guess it doesn't matter. We did get a use of they in the mm -hmm. uh, first bit of dialogue here. Um, nice. Monk Shen it is. Alright, our clothes are not in fashion. Good to know. I don't know how important that is. But, you know, if we happen to make a lot of money from Shadow Running, might as well get some nice outfits. That's true. Mm-hmm. Right, so Shen has weapons, healing stuff, acupuncture. Yeah, I do actually want to know what kind of religious order they belong to. <laughs> yes, actually. Uh, starting in 1990, definitely in Shadowrun, from all yeah. sorts. Definitely, yeah. I actually honestly assumed that like ancient orders of warrior monks had like blacksmiths or something. You don't go to the weapons shop. I don't know, maybe the Emperor commissions you something. I don't know how it works. Wu-Tang Mountain. Ah, they actually are a blacksmith. Well, fair enough. Let's ask about that. Awakened soul. You know, I'd been thinking I was going to be punching people, but, uh, you know, burning sword believe... sounds pretty cool. This is why we've stayed agnostic in the um, unarmed and melee tree, is so that we can go unarmed. Yeah. And sword. Ah, unfortunately, they don't have uh, flaming swords on offer yet. What is Xing Yi Quan? Xing Yi Quan. The five element fist style. Real big etc. there. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing Lighting I don't a lot. probably do not actually have to learn this to play the game. It doesn't sound like it would fit into the combat system very well. A top. A lump. <laughs> a demo of having punched a car at some point. Some real Street Fighter shit. Uh. Alright, uh, what do you got for sale? Katana, machete, street monk outfit, manifest. See, this is why Excellent. this is some of why we want to be unarmed. Yes, those seem good. Yeah. Well, I mean, low damage doesn't sound appealing, but slowing the target and reducing their arm aim rather that is good. Uh, it, the armor Piercing piercing on the armor. manifest. Oh, that's yeah. pretty pretty great. Magic resistance. Okay, how much money have I got to dump into this stuff? <laughs> I want Manifest, um, I I think I want Magic Resistance, I'll probably be sad if I don't have it at some point in the future. Um, might want Nerve Strike. Tattered Robes. I mean, minor protection from harm is better than no protection from harm, right? Let's uh, confirm this and go check what you're actually wearing. Yeah, that's a good idea. Alright, um, why? Alright, it gives me the equip screen immediately to see if I want to equip anything. So we'll equip, uh, Manifest, or oh, hang on, how do you actually... Looks like it, it auto-equipped them, because this, this is your ah, yes. equipment. So it did. Yeah. 
that's all for now. All right, characters looking. We've got we've got a whole bunch of points to spend as well. It's not going to be a lot of action, I think, in this particular episode because we've spent a lot of time talking to people, poking around, and buying things and looking at stats. But we'll be set up for some some shadow running in the near future. True. What's the all right? So outfit right there. Yeah, Secure that monk adept thing will be pretty good. Now, armor one, no special characteristics. It yeah certainly looked like uh, what Shen had on offer is an improvement. I could do with a street monk outfit. Now, how do we feel about nerve strikes? It's expensive. I don't like like just as a general rule, I don't like characters like this trading damage for debuffs. Hmm. Hmm, a bit worried about it, yeah. It might be nice to take uh, some... If we're going to do punching, maybe take some brass knuckles as well because they don't, take, they don't have a cooldown, whereas the spell attacks do have a cooldown, yes? Uh, I believe... So. Yes, they do. So, well, I, I think that's how it works. I think this is a weapon that can be used repeatedly. I'll, I'll find out, basically. It's cheap enough to, to try that out. And that is all of our money, approximately. So... Yep. Cool. Equip the street monk outfit. Got the brass knuckles. Uh, in fact, possibly the way it works is that you use them as a weapon and use a, a punch spell at the same time. I don't know yet. Yeah. Confirm. There is one more question we haven't asked Spider here about the exotic animals. Huh. The medicines and poisons made from these creatures, okay. I... I don't... I, yeah, I have my questions about the efficacy of this, but whatever. They clearly know what they're talking about when it comes to punching. Or they're very, very good at the hard sell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Possibly I've pulled all this new yen away on, on like, secret monk techniques that are actually just self-help nonsense. Three years ago, Spider Shen was in high school. <laughs> Possibly so. A zoomer of the 2060s. Alright, there's a lot more poking around here to do. Um, I don't know if this makes for good watching as a Let's Play video. Nevertheless, we are doing it. I'm tempted to do some leveling up, in fact, and then maybe maybe even call the episode. Let's be like, yeah, that hey. sounds, sounds correct. Alright. So let's look at the characters here, the ones who are not Danny Flash, and see what their character options are. I'll, I'll just briefly go through all of these, maybe not even make a pick. We're going to talk about it offline, possibly. So Gobbit has the option of ranged combat specialization, or better spirit so, control. I'm tempted to go with the spirit control, because that stuff is cool. Yeah, the way that these usually work is there are two dreamed-up paths for each mm -hmm. character to go down. Um, is, a, is Zero Bell is going to be Explosive Grenade Launcher Lady and uh, and Decker. Mm -hmm. um, I like both of those, unfortunately, so that'll be a hard choice. Yeah. Um, I believe um, Duncan is going to be melee and ranged. Well, both of his first two abilities are rifle abilities, so he's uh, not going to be super melee. But yeah, Firepower Round does more damage and AP. AP for armor piercing as opposed to action points. And... Uh, second one makes people easier to hit. That's an interesting one. I wonder if you have to hit them to make them easier to hit. Okay, so those are our options for leveling up the team. Yeah. As for Danny himself, let me flash, let's spend seven points of karma. Let's see what we've got in here. Spell and key casting options. Hint we don't care about, I think. He's, uh, he's not an academic. No. Strength we probably do care about, so the next point of uh, close combat will give us Overwatch, which will be good to have. Yes, Overwatch will basically allow us to do opportunity attacks, that's how it works. Yeah. Really. More yeah. points of Strength will do extra damage, more points of Unarmed will give us good chances to hit. And, I'm not uh, sure we want to put stuff into melee weapons or unarmed. Uh, yeah, not, maybe not immediately, we probably do want to eventually, yeah. I suspect. Quickness is for defense, which will probably matter if you're in... Malay all the time, although it also yeah it's a ranged combat hit skill so that's not not the big thing. Body might be a better option there, although um, since we're not, hmm, not presently using cyberware, 
I don't actually know what to spend points on here. Um, What's key casting for? Can equip stride, stride. quick strike, increase spellbook slot. I, I'm sure we're going to want that at some point. I'm actually yeah. just going to take like the all the spell things, and then I think that I'm hoping I won't actually need to increase either of those for a long time. Um, I don't know. Maybe the spell casting stuff is anti synergistic, but maybe not. We'll find out. See whether that was a bad idea or not in the future. Let's, uh, can I get control for a second? Yes, you can. All right. Let's see here. Let's go. PDA. Go here. Yes. Yeah, so we got an extra spell slot, but we didn't get two. Uh, I think that's because what? the points we took did not unlock yes. two extras. Well, what it was. I think the fourth point of key casting unlocked an extra spellbook slot there. The third point of spell casting did not. It unlocked um, dragon it did lights. Not, okay. It was this point that. Okay, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. So we, we probably are getting spellbook slots from both, which is good if we're going to have both ranged and fist magic. I I'm pretty sure at this point that Danny Flash is not going to use swords, even though swords are very cool, just because you can't. Well, surely you cannot focus on spill uh, fist spells, spell spells, and swords. There is a reason we want to stay in swords, is all I'll say. Mm -hmm. Is that reason uh, the skill you're mousing over on the screen, key casting? Part of it key is focus, um, two attacks in the same round. Uh, it does sound target good. from the same ability is very good. Uh, there is also, when I was playing, when I played this game the last time, I ran into the uh, best weapon in the game for physical adepts. And, and it was a sword, or at least it was not it was a fist. A sword. <laughs> all right, I, to I won't totally foreclose in my mind the possibility of swords. Yeah, you can tack up to eight times a turn with that thing. Uh, that sounds uh, so. There are absurd. there are reasons not to you know, not to fully go into the fist lifestyle. Uh -huh. um, and honestly, if like uh, most of your attack is going to be based off of these key spells instead of using your unarmed or melee. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the way that the game calculates the bonuses, you'll want to be putting them into. Um, the key stuff and close combat rather than the, the like the other stuff which is for the street samurai yeah I'll, I'll want points and willpower if that's the chance to hit with both kinds of spells Do and that. if we ruin the build we can always uh, fix it off screen yep <laughs> the uh, it's possible Danny needs more defenses of some kind I'm wondering whether there is utility magic whether there's hermetic magic that will be good to not die with that'll be interesting to find out there are things called, like, totems, I believe, which will want to dabble in some of, like, I think it's the charisma. I think those were a shaman thing. Works. Yeah. Then they, they are shaman things, but, like, much like cyberware, like, it opens a shaman equip slot, and mm -hmm. if you have the prereq in shaman, you could just equip the totem and you get the benefits, which are usually, like, uh, an extra point of whatever. And the way, with given the ways that uh, cost scaling works the more you already are into an attribute, the more valuable costs. a plus one to that is. Yes, and which is of. why it costs more, yeah. Just poking around here, there's clearly more people to talk to and possibilities before we go to the, the boat computer. But this is probably a good time to cut here. We've uh, mm -hmm. been introduced to the world of shadow running. Well, not really introduced to so much as uh, forced into. Hey, look at this, pick up. That seems like something to click on. It's an advanced medkit. A medkit. That's ah, pretty good. Nice. I just stole this from somebody. I'm not sure. All right. If I ran across a medkit sitting out in the rain on the Hayoi docks, I'm not sure I would take it. <laughs> it's an advanced medkit, though. Can you yes. really pass that out? Reliable Matthew. Interesting right, names so of people around here. We will end the episode here, and when we pick up next time, maybe talking to a few more people, and then going out on the Shadowrun. We will. We will go out on a shadow run, almost certainly. Thanks for watching.